Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I hope everybody is in good health. Hope everybody is doing well. But as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service on Victory Night, the word says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the, of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. And on that, brothers and sisters, let's give unto the Lord glory and strength by lifting up our hands and praising his wonderful and holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, dear Lord God, because you are all powerful. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, because you are merciful and you are kind. You are good to all, dear Lord. We thank you because you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. We thank you, dear Lord. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And below me, below me, there's a place where you can give. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. So our God is good. And so let's be faithful in our giving, right? And so um, that being said, I think Sister Davis has put in the hyperlink a place where you can just click on that and give. Okay, so it's nothing complicated about it. Just try it. Just go, go over there. Just click and you'll see how simple it is, and we appreciate your giving, right? And so at this time, let us ask God's blessing on the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for your giving. Let's be a blessing, right? Let's be a blessing to the things that are of God for through finances, we can, we can function. Without finances, how can you pay the bills, right? So let's be a blessing to the house of God and God will bless you. And we do it because, we, uh, because the Lord commands us to. He commands us to give, uh, pay our tithe and give our offerings. All right, brothers and sisters, this is Victory Night. Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to Brother Lance. I want to let Brother Lance know specifically that I appreciate him. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I want to say howdy to you, bro. And so uh, let's get on with it, Brother Lance. Let's get it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 7. See what God wants to do on victory night. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 7. The word says, remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Let me read this again. It says, remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. So we want to take that for as a text. And before we get into preaching this word, we want to give God all the glory. I know we just got finished praising him, but we want to give God all of the glory for his goodness and his mercy, right? And the Lord is not into wasting people's time. God has a message for you tonight. You can blame all the mistakes on me, but God doesn't make any mistakes. And brothers and sisters, I don't really have a lot written down here, but God knows uh, what we have need of, and God knew who would be here tonight, right? So to the Lord be all of the glory because of who he is 
if um, God, if God, if you are moved by anything in this church worship service tonight. The title of the message is Remember and Forget Not. Remember and Forget Not. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this message tonight. Dear Lord God, give me clarity of mind. Dear God, as I minister this word with your help, dear Lord, allow a fresh unction to come upon me. Dear God, and touch the hearts of all of us, dear Lord, that we all may learn of your goodness and your mercy and be bettered tonight. We thank you, Jesus, for victory night service. Let us not have to all of a sudden get up and go to the bathroom or have to all of a sudden go, go uh, and answer the phone. But Lord, at this time, let us give our whole entire attention on what the most important voice in the whole universe would have to say. And that is you, dear Lord, to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember and forget not. Remember and forget not. It's very amazing how easy it is to forget stuff. I mean, you would think that, man, I know I will remember that. I would remember that. No problem. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to put it anywhere. I, I'll remember it. And then the next thing you know, you're going, man, uh, when it's time to execute, you you uh, messed up. You forgot that appointment or or you forgot uh, what you had to do or you missed that thing that you were supposed to do. And you just knew that you would remember it. Right. Uh, man, how often have we been so forgetful throughout all of our lives? We all can relate. Right. We all can relate of times of a uh, man. We just knew that we would remember that. Man, I don't have but so much stuff, but we just soon forget, right? And in our word of the Lord, we're looking at God reading the very hearts of the people. Let me say that again. We're looking at God reading the very hearts of the people. The Lord knows the hearts of all men and women. He knows how we think. He knows uh, how we tick here. And right here in the word of the Lord, the children of Israel were pretty much uh, going to, they were pretty much given the land of Canaan. They were pretty much uh, getting ready to go into a land of blessing, a land of inheritance. God had it all mapped out for them. He even told them, he said, I will send the hornet before you, right? He said, I am going to go before you. I'm going to knock your enemies down and you're going to be able to possess a land that flows with milk and honey, right? But this is the thing God was saying. He told them that I have something to say to you though. Because it seems like you have a short-term memory, right? It seems like you are extremely forgetful. I have something to say, and that is I want to talk about what happened on Mount Horeb when, uh, when I was given the commandments to Moses. Moses was up there for 40 days and 40 nights, and you went down and you began to sin against God. You began to build this molten calf, and, and you were committing fornication. You were having your little uh, 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 orgies and stuff going on at the bottom of the mountain. I'm just being real, y'all. That is what was going on at the bottom of that mountain. These people were doing some things against God, against Moses, but yet, and God came down and God rebuked them for what they did, right? Well, Moses was sent down by God. Moses rebuked them for what they did and destroyed the calf that they made and everything. But God was bringing out a point. He said to them that you are a stiff-necked people. He said, don't say that you are going over to this land because of your goodness. The only reason why you're going over to this land is really because of 
but my grace and my long suffering and my and my blessing upon upon getting you over there by fulfilling the promise that I made to Abraham. Right. He said, remember and forget not. Here is the problem with the children of Israel, y'all. These people did not care about remembering. And they were extremely forgetful because the, the thing is, when they left those words out of their out of their bank here, when they did not allow that to work for them to remember and not to forget. Guess what, y'all? On the way to the promised land, they forfeited the very blessings of God and they could not go over there because they soon forgot. And that's the way people are today, right? People easily forget God. They forget how the Lord had brought them up out of sin. They forget how he has saved them, how that he's done a marvelous work in their lives. They, uh, a lot of times people will parade themselves and carry themselves as though uh, they had never been a sinner or they have never been lost. And they begin to forget how that when they called out to God, they forget the night that they got saved. They forget the day that they put their hands together and said, Jesus, save me with tears coming out of their eyes. Right. They begin to uh, forget those things. And they don't remember the cross and they don't remember the reality of the tugs of God of when they were lost and on their way to hell. And then God had to wrestle with them and deal with them over and over again until they finally got saved and they get right with God and they're walking with the Lord, right? But then all of a sudden, here it goes. They begin to forget and they will not remember. The thing about using, uh, remembering the things of God and not forgetting the things of God, the thing about it is what fuels it is thankfulness, gratitude of what the Lord had done. If the children of Israel had turned around and said, uh, if they, after, after the Lord had shown them this, if they would have been continually uh, praising the Lord and being thankful and having an attitude of gratitude, it, they will always go back to the mount, right? They will always go back. They would have always have gone back to the time where God had dug them out of the miry clay. And I'm telling you something, uh, when, when, uh, if they would have done these things here, brothers and sisters, when it was time to go over to the promised land, if they would have had an attitude of gratitude toward God, if they would have allowed these two words, remember and uh, rather uh, four words, remember and forget not to be a part of their program. If they would have uh, had this working in their life, these four powerful words, remember and forget not going over and over and over again in their minds, they would have had the same attitude Caleb had when the 12 spies got sent out. When they got sent out to spy out the land, they would have said, you know what? We are well able to possess the land. We have to work this in our hearts, y'all. We have to remember what God has done. Or else we tend to live from church service to church service, just like from paycheck to paycheck. Remembering and, for, and not forgetting, brothers and sisters, fuels us to continue on with strength and with power to serve God. You just don't realize how great that is. One thing about people who lose out with the Lord, uh, people who don't know the Lord anymore, or they quit going to church and they quit uh, 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 attending the services and everything is it seems like they become what y'all another person why because they have soon forgotten they have soon forgotten i know the word of the of god tells us to add to our faith it tells us to add to our faith virtue and to virtue kindness and to kindness uh uh, charity and it begins to uh, patience and godliness and all these disciplines and these virtues that we are to add uh, to our faith and he said and if we do not add to our faith the man or the woman has forgotten that they were cleansed from their sins brothers and sisters if you're not continuously adding to your faith you are forgetting 
and you are forgetting uh, without being aware of the forgetfulness. Right. It's one thing uh, to to be aware of just forgetting and really forget when you become forgetful. You're not aware of it when you forget until it comes to a head. You're not aware of the beginning of the forgetting process. People are unaware of it. Right. And to keep yourself from going down that slippery slope, a person must add to their faith. And when you add to your faith, and I add to my faith, when the people of God add to their faith, what does it do, brothers and sisters? It helps you, yes, to remember and not to forget, but when you're adding to faith, what does it do? It makes you stronger. Brothers and sisters, there's a word that comes to mind. And Sister Alice, I was talking to her, fellowshipping with her last night and everything, but she, she had brought this word out. And that is that God wants us to be, y'all, extraordinary. He wants us to be extraordinary, brothers and sisters. And being extraordinary comes when you remember and forget not God, how, how God has saved you and dug you out. And not only since he saved us, but also what he's done through that time. Where have you been with the Lord throughout the years you've been serving him? Where have you been where God came down and fellowship with you when there was no one else to fellowship with you? Do you even know the Lord that way? I'm preaching to people like they're, they are saved. Do you, did, have you ever had a re relationship where you felt the presence of God? And the thing is, do we soon forget the day we felt the presence of the Lord? How you forget, how you stop remembering stuff, you quit adding. And when you quit adding to your faith and I quit adding add to my faith, when the people of God quit adding to their faith, they die. They forget that they have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Yes, brothers and sisters, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, brothers and sisters, it's not going to be because of our own goodness, but it's going to be because of the grace and the goodness of the Lord. Reverend Serrano talked about humility. Let me add to this. Humility. You want to know what humility is in layman's term? Is knowing your place. Humility is knowing your place. And when you know your place, you will say, Jesus, I'll never forget how I was such a liar, how I would curse, how I would be dishonest. I was lost and on my way to hell, and you made me this way. I know my place. I know my place. Do you know your place? That's humility, y'all. When a person knows their place and they're a sinner, they'll open up their mind. And their heart to God, they'll be broken and get right with God. The sinner doesn't know his place. He's arrogant if he's still a sinner. He's proud if he's still, uh, or she's proud and clothes from God dealing with them. But through softness and humility saying, I know I need you, Jesus. I know I need to be right. I know I need to get right. I know that I am lost. I know my place right now, and I need another place. Forgive me because the heart opens when you're humble. Yes, in the word of the Lord, uh, God began to break down. He began to break down to them. He said, don't forget. You need to remember. When we remember and forget not, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at how that it takes us. It, it would take us all to another, another level in the Lord. The children of Israel could have done it. Yes, they could have made it over to the promised land. When I'm talking about the children of Israel, I'm talking about the elders here, the adults here. These are the people who could not stop complaining against God. They were always full of fear. They were always disturbed about God's will. They were always disturbed about the things of the Lord. Uh, they saw giants. They were disturbed about that. 
They uh, were in a land where the water was bitter. They were disturbed about that. They were in a place where they did not have any food. They were disturbed about that after God had already shown them that I, that, uh, I am able to part the waters and make a way where there seemeth to be no way. But they were constantly disturbed at the will of God. And when someone is constantly stir disturbed at the will of God, they forget the very thing that God had done prior to that uh, situation that they are in. The Lord parts the Red Sea. They watched uh, Pharaoh's army drown in the Red Sea. They're on the other side of the Red Sea, but they did not see any food. And then they said, this is what they said. <clears throat> they concluded that God, that God brought them out there to what y'all die. That's what they came up with. That was their reasoning when they forgot. When they could not remember, they had a memory loss. The circumstance provoked a memory loss in their minds, in their heart. Fear sapped, up, sapped out all that they had just witnessed and saw. They just saw the Red Sea. I mean, split in half. They just saw Pharaoh's army drown. Not only that, they're looking at the pillar, uh, the, the, uh, the pillar in front of them. They're looking at literally God leading them. But they said, God brought us out here. When they did not have food, they began to say, you know what? He has brought us out here to die. That means we don't believe God. That means I cannot add to my faith under this circumstance. That's what that means, y'all. That means I cannot add to this to my faith because it's too bad right now to add virtue. It's too bad right now to add strength. Because of not remembering. I'm here to tell you when you don't remember and you're forgetful as a Christian, guess what? That's when we start living from service to service. It always has to be a good church service for some people. It always has to be fired up, and we want them to be fired up, yes. But we cannot afford to live for God like we do on a job from check to check, right? Because if I remember, that means I got something saved up. That means I got a cushion in my heart. And if the children of Israel had remembered, y'all, when they crossed that Red Sea, they, they would have known. They would have said these words, no doubt. They would have said, you know, God is going to provide us some food. Because if he got us through that, through the Red Sea, did y'all see how he got us through the Red Sea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's amazing what God just done. We just sit here waiting on the food now. God's going to bring the food. God's going to bring the water. God's going to bring the blessing. But they could not bring themselves to doing that. What about us tonight? Remember and forget not. It is a simple message, but this thing can work in any area of our life. Any area. The word of the Lord, this thing can work in any... When we begin to remember and hold to the wisdom and the understanding that God has given us through the church services and Bible studies, do we remember? Jesus died on the cross, rose on the third day. Boy, that was very important, the day that we needed him to be our Savior. The day that we needed him to save us. The, the very moment that we needed him to forgive us and, and we needed to make it right and we needed to turn. We were lost. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was very important. But guess what? It should still be very important today because today we still need the death, 
burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's not to be forgotten. We remember what we want to remember. And we forget what we want to forget. And oh, how easy it is for us to not remember and for us to forget the things that are of the Lord. It's easy to, you know, you know, that's if there's anything we are to remember. Anything that we are to cleave to, it is Jesus and what he's done for us. And with an attitude of gratitude that will cause the person to excel in God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is not looking for weak people, right? Yes, the Apostle Paul said, when I am weak. That's when I'm strong. Yes, he said that, but he ended it with the word strong. When I, but see, the apostle Paul was depending on God. See, Paul knew his place. Paul knew his place. He said, when I am humble before the Lord and I cannot do or I cannot meet those requirements that he has for me, he said, but I call upon him for strength or, and I don't know which way to turn. And I call upon him. He gives me the wherewithal to be able to, to accomplish whatever it is that's challenging me right now. It makes me strong. And that's where I'm going with this, y'all. The Lord is not looking for people who's going to sit there and be weak on him. God is not looking for people who are going to do this thing half-heartedly. Like most people approach their, their entire life. Salvation is not to be approached with a half-hearted attitude, y'all. But salvation is to be approached with all of our strength, all of our might, and all of our soul and all of our mind. How about us tonight? Remember and forget not. Brothers and sisters, you can't let this situation say, hey, Forget this mess. You ain't got time to forget Jesus now. Is if there's a time to remember the Lord, it's to remember him right now. And get on our face and thank him till we work up a hot attitude of gratitude toward the Lord. Some of us need to get down on our knees and begin to say thank you, Jesus, over and over again until the tears come rolling down our face like it did the day we got saved. Until we are broken on, broken on the inside and we begin to know our place, not being heady and thinking above of what we ought to think, you know, being a Mr. High minded, but to be men that are of low, of a lower attitude because they know their place under the Lord saying, God, I am thankful. And you still mean something to me. No, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter how jacked up America is right now, no matter uh, uh, how uh, things are, are tending to pressure us or what I'm going through, a broke back sickness, coronavirus, no matter what, Lord, you are still precious to me. And no one can make God precious to you but you. No one can. The job of the pastor is to make you thirsty. <laughs> that is my job. For the horse that does not want to want to uh, to to drink the water, I gotta salt your oats. I gotta salt the grass field and make you thirsty. That's all I can do. But there's some people who get so thirsty they still cannot drink. I I, I tell you one thing, y'all. I'm telling you. I hear people come to God, oh, man, I do this for my Lord Jesus Christ. I do that. Oh, oh, oh. And next week, I'm going, what happened? What happened? Living from church service to church service. What happened to that? We got to come real and say, I will remember. Be strong in this. If you can't be strong in anything, be strong in this, and it will bring you strength. I will remember and I will not forget and I'm going to do that 
with all of my might. Because if I, if I can get some people to do just that, they'll find themselves becoming stronger in God. Amen. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed in reverence to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for all the things that you have done. Dear Lord God, I ask that you would continuously move in our hearts and in our lives until we make it all the way to glory. Let us never forget what you have done in our life. Pray after me if you need some guidance in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, for all the things that you have done. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the cross. And I thank you for living in my heart. For I will never forget you no matter what. And I will ever be loyal to you. And I will move all things out of the way. Dear God, that you may have first place in my life. And I pray this in seriousness. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our God is good, y'all. Be mindful of church worship service Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Church worship service Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. May God bless you real good.